Vampires. A new special guest. And that's what we're talking about today. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rob and Ann Real Estate Show. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor, and with me is actually Ozzy. What's up, Ozzy? And I'm Rob Howe, the rock star realtor. Welcome to episode three. Can you believe it? We have three episodes out already? Grace. Grace. So it's going by fast. It's very fast. And you're thinking not this week, but the following week we will have our channel. Yeah. Live it's and time to go live on a separate channel of our very own for the Rodney Real Estate Show. And if you're not familiar with our show, we air every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> yes, something like that. And so make sure to look for Robin Ann's Real Estate Show. It'll be up there this week. It'll be kind of bare bones, but it'll be ready to smash that subscribe button and uh, be ready for our next episode after this one. As always, we talk about the picture of the week, and Mr. Rob's going to go over that one this time. So this picture is an absolute no-no, no different than any of our other ones we've shown. Picture of the week. My goodness, you're going to drive by the property and take the front picture, and I've got your rear view mirror in there. I mean, we've got two houses in one. We've got the, the house behind there, and then the house right there. I mean, and then they got the angle of this house. I mean, what's going on? It looks like a cottage. It doesn't even look like a house. Just scrunched down and, I mean, who does this? <laughs> I would say the real estate agent that took that photo does it. <laughs> I wouldn't do this even just showing somebody a property. Hey, this property's coming available. I would still step out of the vehicle and take a dang photo. I mean, are you serious? Exactly. How lazy is that real estate agent that they had to take it from their car? Yeah. Yeah. Absolute no, no, don't do this. And uh, if you see somebody doing this, it better be uh, like Google going around and uh, mapping your house or something, you know. <laughs> and Not if your Google agent does, does that, that and you yeah. see it, I would demand for them to retake the photos of your house. This is just not doing justice for your home. Yeah, yeah, come on. I mean, uh, again, even if you t use the cell phone, which we, we absolutely say no to those, but you, you could get out and take better cell phone pictures. Right. Anyways, this is a no-no. Which brings us to our tip of the week. Yep, and that tip is cut back your trees in front of your house so you can see the house. You know, these pictures need to show the entirety of your right. front house. And if you've got trees that are lit, that are going all over the front of your house, they just need to be pruned back. Yep. And also, trees that are in front of your house like that are on the roof, so that's probably going to mess with your roof. Yeah. You have debris on your roof, and then once they have a home inspection, they're going to tell right. you to trim it anyway, so might as well just do it before. Get it out of the way. How many times does that come up? A lot. lot. Uh, all the time. A the lot. tree is, and what happens is the wind blows, and if that branch is strong enough, it'll knock the, 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 the tiles right off. If you've got a composition roof, it'll tear that thing up until it's... You know, toast. Yeah. And so yeah. you don't want to do that. So, so that's actually two things that will be on the report. One to trim the tree, and then also you'll have issues with your roof problems. Yeah, potential roof problems, which we never want to see. If you can uh, hunt that trouble down before you have it, basically say no to trees hitting your roof. Make sure when you take a when you're getting your property ready that that tree is cut back so we can see the whole front of your home. Our photo of the week it wasn't the worst example, but it is a reminder that. You got to have that done. Yep, exactly. Next, do, 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 market update. So last week, September 6th through the 12th, we only sold 462 single family homes. Compared to the prior week, uh, it's a huge dive. Yeah. yeah, it was down 314 single family residents, 314 less. I think there's reasons for that though. Yeah, I mean, but week one of September was very strong, week two was not as strong, so what do you think um, is the reason behind all that? Well, I still think that what we're dealing with is a problem with inventory. True, true. I mean, I have quite a few closings this month. Um, do you think possibly, too, with back to school, people weren't shopping in August as they were in July? Could be a little dip. I think that is a factor. I think the buyers may not be finding homes that they really want with the limited inventory, so they're just going to wait it out a little bit. Plus, you have people going back to school right. in their in their homes. <laughs> yeah. 
So you're going to have some ebb and flow. And I think there's a hidden number within all of this that we, right now, we think we have 1.4 uh, months of inventory, but really we don't. Because when we look up and we see what we have for single family residences available, you have to minus out, really technically minus out about oh, almost 900 tenant occupied properties. And that creates a problem because you can't see those properties right now. Those properties are not really available. And especially if you're a primary residence buyer, you're gonna buy this to live in this home. I mean, can you imagine going and just looking at the pictures and saying, yeah, the tenant's probably keeping it just fine. I'll go ahead and give you that price you want. Uh, probably not too realistic, right? And the investors are not really jumping on these things, wrestling them right down right now, no. because obviously we need to see what happens with tenants and all that. There's a lot to shake out. Yeah, and we went over last week the tenant moratorium was extended, right? Or the rental moratorium. So until that sort of gets, uh, you know, goes through the process, this is going to create some interesting waves in the rental market. And right now, I can tell you one of those waves is that it's very difficult to find a rental. You know, yeah, it's actually very difficult. But going back to the number, why that 850 or nearly 900 properties makes a difference in our inventory is because you got to take that away. And what we think is one uh, 1 1.4 months is really less. It's more like right. a month of inventory. Right. I mean, last month there was a little over 4,000 homes without offers. So then you take away almost 900 homes. That puts us in the 3,000 range. Yeah. So that's what you have to choose from in the entire valley, entire Vegas Valley. And that is very limited when you think about what is out there as far as, uh, you know, buyers that are available. There are enough buyers to eat up our inventory. We made a bet last week. Yeah, we? we sure did. It was our 2020 <laughs> bet. It was $20 on one bet. There was actually two bets. Right. And it was $20 on the other bet. Well, my theory was that the median sales price for August was going to drop. However, it did not drop. It went from $330,000 to $335,000 and Rob won that bet. <laughs> but you know what? I lost the other bet. I should have known better because of the inventory being so low that we could not hit our numbers from the, that we wouldn't go over the prior month's numbers or within 3%. So I lost, lost that bet. Majorly. It was like below 8% or something. Yeah, I almost lost so bad that I lost both of the bets just by <laughs> default. <laughs> but it was a fun bet. <laughs> yeah, I should have known. Yeah. Oh, well. We hedged. Yeah. We hedged. So uh, no money exchanged. I know, kind of anticlimactic. I know. Uh, so we always like to go over the lowest and highest price homes that happened the week before, and I always like to let him go over the lowest ones because I like to go over the high ones. What the <laughs> heck is up with that? I don't know what's up with that. Well, what we had for the lowest was a $100,000 sale, and it was for cash. Of course. And, uh, you know, it was uh, located in North Las Vegas. Uh, it was a three bedroom, two bath, and uh, it was 988 square feet. It sold in a really long period of four days. Four it's days. an investment property after, I think there was a couple pictures on the MLS that we we're posting up above, but obviously it was a dive and needed a lot of work in North likely. Las Vegas. Pretty likely that it needed some love. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, but really hard to find that $100,000 score. Right. Pretty much anywhere. anywhere. So if anywhere. they're popping up, I mean, I'm surprised it lasted four days. So the highest price home sold for six point five million, with an asking price of seven point one million. And this home was located again in Henderson. What's up with Henderson and these million dollar homes selling? But this home was actually on the market for over four hundred days. It's a beautiful home. It had five bedrooms, six baths, a little over seventy eight hundred square feet. Um, and but I can't believe it was on the market for that long. But it also sold for cash as well. Finally, yeah. after 400 some days, it was a beautiful home. But again, the story remains true with the luxury home market, and this is pretty much true everywhere with luxury homes. Uh, they take a little longer to sell, and if you list them, you know, much higher than it, what you probably should. Well, it's going to take you a little longer exactly. to sell it. So obviously it was priced too high to begin with, and that's always a thing that we're always talking about. Regardless if it's luxury or not, price it right at yeah. market value and don't price it over. Yeah, I think you can make more money pricing your property correctly than 
just you know saying, well, it's worth this much, and that's what I want to get for it. Right. And I think this property probably could have sold in 200 days. Right. <laughs> I think a lot of sellers have this uh, mindset that if they price it above the value, then they're going to get it below, and they're they're okay with it because that's what they anticipate. Right. But the key is to price it at value so you can get higher than that. Yeah, or at least I, or at ask least closer. The value asking. Yeah, at least closer. Now, uh, uh, in the luxury market, you can figure there's going to be a little haggling, so maybe a little bit over. But I, this was this was quite a, a, a you know that was six six hundred thousand dollar difference in the price. So right. You know, that's what happens. And last week for luxury sales, there was only ten that sold um, last week, which was September sixth through the twelfth. The prior week was 19, so that's nine down from the week before that. Yeah, and that makes sense. Week to week, we're going to have some ebbs and flows on this, and, and you know, but it is telling us that we are seeing still some good movement in that section. Right. Here we go in the news. In the news. In the news. In the news. What's in the news? <laughs> I think what not everybody's talking about, but we're going to talk about because it is news, is iBuyers. Yep. iBuyers? What is an iBuyer? Do you even know what it is? Well, an iBuyer is an investment buyer or internet buyer, and they are, you know, they are a little different than your usual buyer in the, that they, they act like they offer uh, some things that other buyers can't offer. And uh, they go in and they give you a cash offer usually for your home and a number of things that they do. Now, within that, they offer much less than market value because they want to resell your property. They want to buy it. money, right? Yeah, they yeah. want to buy it for low and sell it for high. So that's, that's what iBuyers are doing. The reason why they're in the news is because they are back at it. Yep, they took a little break during the whole C word. And yep. now they're back. And so an iBuyer, if you may have heard of some of them, is OfferPad, um, Zillow, and I always forget. The Open, other door. Open Door. Open yeah, Door. Yeah. Exactly. The name brand ones. Those would be the larger ones and maybe a little bit more comfortable ones to deal with because you know those brand names. But there are a lot of others and they go by little LLCs and whatnot. And they're just people calling you up or sending you mail saying, I want to buy your house. Sometimes they'll do the nice little thing where it looks like a handwritten note. Sometimes it even is a handwritten note because they're trying to play on an emotion here. But I will tell you that in general, they are nothing like the usual human beings that you'll deal with when it comes to real estate agents. But you should absolutely go to a real estate agent and not a buyer because you're potentially losing tens of thousands of dollars. Exactly. And the pro or what they advertise is, is that you don't have to um, be like a typical seller where you're having showings all the time. The point is is that they're going to give you cash and you can close in less than 30 days, you can close in two weeks or however long it takes to close for the inspections that are necessary to get done and you're done. You don't have to go through the whole showing process. Right. And that sounds great, but you're talking about taking a huge haircut. It's like, it, it's way worse than like, okay, I don't want to go to the grocery store because it's farther than my convenience store. It's called a convenience store because they're going to hit you with that convenience fee. Right. Well, it's a similar type thing, but it's much harder on your on your wallet. Right. And I believe that they prey on people that may not be realize that you can get these things done relatively easily through a traditional sale. You know, and their costs are huge. I mean, a typical, Agent charges six percent, three percent to the buying side, three percent to the selling side. Now that's just a typical, you know, that, that's not set in stone. What an eye buyer does is they charge like eight to ten percent. So you're losing money just because of all the fees that they're charging you. Yeah, well, they they charge fees, and I here's another thing that I've definitely heard of, and this is kind of, in my opinion, it's despicable, because they'll go in, they'll offer you a price that may seem reasonable. That may seem like, well, then maybe I'm taking a small haircut here. I'm not, you know, for what they're offering me and the convenience, it's worth it. But then they get into the deal with you, then they hit you with that inspection and their request for repairs or their really going to be requests for money off of the property. They're going to ask for a reduction in the sales price because of, oh, this and that and the other thing. Right. So now that's where they have that little secondary hit. And guess what? If you don't agree with them, 
they're out of there. Yeah. They just say, okay, fine, bye-bye. And you wasted a lot of time and a lot of energy, and you don't want to do that. I mean, the market is hot right now with very little inventory. Don't use an iBuyer, don't use an internet buyer, use a traditional real estate agent that's gonna take the time to sell it within a couple of days so that you don't have to go through the whole showing process. Because of the high demand, hopefully we will sell it in a, yeah. less than a week. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that they're even out buying tells you something because if you look back when things started and the lockdown started, right, they just disappeared. As a matter of fact, they canceled contracts they had. They had paper pushers in the back saying, <laughs> you know what, we can't do this, we're off and running. That's heartless. There was no heart involved. It was just a business deal. It was like, you know, we're going to get out of here. And so really, in my opinion, you have no proper representation. You have no heart involved. You have no real human being that is trying to help keep that train on the tracks. And even if you did have a buyer that bounced out because in that scenario, you can put the property back on the market and you can get another buyer to go ahead and go forward with. Now, in that situation, you're just stuck. Now you gotta go out and find an agent. You gotta start the whole process over again. Just heartless. Yeah, yeah. So, friends don't let friends use iBuyers. That's the message. Friends <laughs> don't let friends use iBuyers. If you hear about it happening, you tell them, no way, Jose, let's get you over to Ange or Rob, and you'll really be taken care of. Guess what, guys? We have a new guest today. Our guest is coming to us all the way from New York. His name is Rocco. He doesn't want to give his last name. He just goes by Rocco. And Rocco's thinking about moving to Vegas. He is already a fan of the Vegas Golden Knights, and, uh, you know, he just feels like it's calling his name, you know? Vegas might be calling him. You're going to talk to Rocco a little bit, and uh, we're going to see what Rocco has to say about moving to Vegas. Because the Robin Ann Show believes in safety, we had to wear our safety mask when interviewing our new guest, Rocco. I appreciate that. So what brings you to Vegas? Well, I'm thinking about retiring. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've been coming to Vegas since, like, 1973. <gasps> You know, coming here a long time, I've seen the city grow. It's just, uh, you know, it seems like a nice place to live, right? It's an awesome place to live. Yeah, well, and then, you know, I started following, the, you know, the, the Vegas Golden Knights. Right. And, you know, I'm a big hockey fan. And I was like, you know what? They got, they got hockey now. Oh, my goodness. So now, you know, where I'm living, they're just crushing me. I'm, re I'm retiring. And, uh, you know, I got to be able to save my money. So what do you think? I mean, I got to ask you, what do you think about moving to Vegas? Is it, what are the benefits here? Well, there's a lot of wonderful benefits, especially for retirees. There are about 21 to 22 retirement communities alone in Las Vegas. Wow. So I don't know if you're looking to live in a retirement community or not, but yeah. the most biggest benefit is no state income tax and oh, no yeah. property taxes. I love that. I'm getting pinched hard at, 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 over in New York. It's oh, just yeah, crazy. New York is crazy. I have a lot of clients that wanting to relocate from New York. Yeah, well, Ange, why should I use you as an agent? Why? Because I'm everyone's favorite Las Vegas realtor. Okay, well, you know, everyone loves vanilla ice cream. Does that mean everybody got to eat it? Well, because I'm YouTube famous, everyone knows who Angelo Hare is. That's, that's how true. That's, right? That is how I found you. Right? Yeah, I guess that's everyone true. wants to meet me, so I'm the best there is out there. All right, uh, it sounds a little conceited, but hey, <laughs> I'm with you. You know what? I think everyone wants to meet me, but I don't want to meet anybody. I don't want kids running through my yard. Can I get that? Possibly. All right. Uh, they have basements where I'm from. Do we, do we have basements here? Very few houses have basements here. All right. So, so what are you looking for? What type of house are you looking for? Well, you know, I, I would like something that is easy maintenance. Okay. But, uh, you know, it, it, a single story for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah? I mean, so I, I got to know, what's where do I move to in this town? I can definitely show you around. There's a lot of single story houses. And as a real estate agent, I'm not allowed to steer you into a location, but I can offer suggestions on different parts of the valley. And you can maybe check it out yourself. You're going to take me around and show me some things? Yeah, okay, of course. Right there. Okay, okay, yeah, good. Course. I, I really need to find the, the right spot for me. Right. So what do I got to do to get ready to buy a house? I mean, I, I got some cash. What kind of house can I buy? For, you know, I got like uh, 200 G's in cash. 
Is that enough to buy a house? Possibly. It's enough to buy a condo. Oh, I don't. I can't live in a condo. I need that single. Well, floor. since you are a veteran, then you can also apply for a VA loan. You can put some money down towards the VA loan. That way, the interest rates are lower and your payments lower. I want a low payment. My money's gonna be fixed. My income is gonna be fixed when I come here. Well, the most important thing first is to get in touch with a couple of lenders. I can refer a couple of lenders to you, and then we can see where you stand from there. Okay. Thank you, Rocco, for coming to the Robin Ann Show. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I answered some of your pressing questions, and that we will get started looking for an oh, awesome home for you. I'm looking forward to moving to Vegas. Yeah. I just want to save some money, and I want a nice place, and uh, you know, I want simple life. That's all. Well, that we can do for you. All right. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us today. You're welcome. That's kind of fun talking to Mr. Rocco. He is an interesting character. Yeah, he was quite a character, but representative of a lot of people that why they're coming to Vegas or a place that it that looks really sharp to come to. Totally. That's why you sellers need to list your home. Like now. Because we have tons of people wanting to come here, but they can't. I have uh, so many clients that want to buy. There's no houses for them to buy. So sellers, what do we say? Come on out. Let's dance. Thank you so much for watching the Robin Ann Show. As always, if you like this video, you know what to do, right? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All that good stuff, right? Yeah, and subscribe to our new channel. It'll be Robin Ann's Real Estate Show on YouTube, of course. On YouTube. I will post a link down in the description below once it actually does go live. Keep an eye out for that. Well, thank you so much for watching today, and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Yeah.